Hello, welcome to this lesson of the Laplace Transform Tutor. Here we're going to solve another differential equation, again ratcheting up the complexity a little bit as we go. The same process applies. We'll apply the Laplace Transform to both sides, collect ter the terms, uh, trying to put the Laplace Transform on one side by itself, and then we'll end up trying to invert. But what you're going to find is that, you know, the previous two problems we did were pretty simple. And so when we got down to that step, inverting it back from doing the inverse transform back to get to time was pretty simple. From here on out, these problems and the ones that follow, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to invert it. It's still possible given that what we already know, but there's a little trick that we have to do. And you may have, I know that you've used it in the past, it's called partial fractions expansion. I don't want to get into it too much here because I'll review it as we go through the problem. But the bottom line is, in order to really solve anything with Laplace transforms, you pretty much have to be pretty comfortable with partial fractions expansion. I'm going to review it here, but it might be a good idea for you to go back to calculus. I know that my calculus videos cover partial fractions. Everybody taking calculus at some point has to learn partial fractions. So it's probably a good idea uh, for you to be good at that because we, we're going to use it in a lot of problems. So let's just uh, not get too far ahead of ourselves. Let's look at the differential equation. First derivative of the function x of t minus x of t is equal to 2 times the sine of t. So this is a much more realistic looking differential equation that you might see in a, in a real differential equations course, uh, you know, and you, you have to solve that and so on. Uh, the initial condition is x at 0 is equal to 0. And notice that there's only a first derivative anywhere in this equation. That means there's only one initial condition required to solve it. So that's what's given to us. Let's go ahead and march through and do exactly what we always do. Let's take the Laplace transform of everything here. So it would be the Laplace transform of that derivative, Laplace transform of x, and on the right-hand side it's going to be the Laplace transform of 2 times the sine of t. So we go through the equation, applying everything everywhere, and then we will now work with this. So if you remember, we go back over here to refresh your memory, Laplace transform of the first derivative is s times the Laplace minus the initial condition, and that's what we're going to put here. So it'll be s times the Laplace transform of x minus x of 0. That's what we're going to have. Then we have a minus sign here. So everything here just comes from this. Now we have a minus sign. This Laplace of x, we're just going to leave alone. We can't do anything with it yet. On the right-hand side, we have the Laplace transform of 2 times the sine of t. So for now, let's just leave it alone. We'll actually just pull the 2 out because it's a constant, and we'll just say sine of t, like that. All right? So on the left-hand side, what we have, uh, we have s times Laplace transform of x, and then here we have the initial condition, which we can see is zero. So really, I'll just for completeness put it there, but really it just drops away. And now let's go deal with this. What's the Laplace transform of sine of t? Well, if we look over here, the Laplace transform of sine of beta times t is beta over s squared plus beta squared. In this case, in this case beta is 1. So it's going to be 1 over s squared plus 1. So what we'll get here is we'll have 1 over s squared plus plus 1. That's going to be that Laplace transform that we care about. And so what we're going to do now is we will notice that this uh, 0 is basically uh, just basically drops away. So what we're going to have then is we'll factor out a Laplace transform on the left. So we'll have a Laplace transform of x, open a parentheses, we'll have s, and then we'll have minus 1. This basically is simplifying this. The 